So those are our um, uh, ideas, and I think um, I think um, the, the 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 topic is about creating the, the space for the, the people and and the nature at the same time. And I think this is what um, we've been uh, working with um, uh, many stakeholders for the past um, ten years, and we also exploring the new possibilities uh, after this in the future. So thank you for for having me. And um, please, um, uh, um, if you have any questions, we I would like to have a uh, discussion after this. Sure, thank you, Asapan, for the presentation. It was really nice to see a lot of approaches and problem solving on architectural landscape. Sure. Um, let me. Should I, sorry. Should I should I stop um, showing yes, screen? Please. So we can see your face. Yep. Um, so um, I would like to, is there any questions? Let me see for a moment. Okay, um, while we are waiting for questions, I would like to ask, what is the role of landscape architect in this pandemic um, era. Like, I saw a lot of approaches, but most of them happened during the normal, the normal, the normal, you know, what we call normal. But mm. um, if we talk about urban, urban scape or public space and everything mm. else, uh, it is very communal. And we've been told to stay at home most of the time to, mm. to, to isolate ourselves. So, what if the what is the what is your role as landscape architect to to deal with that? I think um, our role as a landscape has always been about uh, um, providing the, the 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 solutions for for the people, and by the way, that how we're gonna keeping um, certain balance. Um, from the um, people requirement also, and also the nature requirement. And I think that the pandemic itself has shown another consequence that uh, it's been the result in developing the city or developing the urbanization without uh, having the nature as part of the, the conversation. I think, and during the pandemic, and when the people start to lock down and people, I think people start to think about the, the nature space, the park more than any time before. I think we can experience that the, the, the earth is cleaner without the people. So I think if we're gonna um, reduce um, the future disruption, that means we need to redesign and rethink the way we design the, the city or the, the, the urban or the way we design the physical space. So I think the role of the landscape architect now, I think we need to look into whether, how we're gonna turn the asset, like I show you in the, 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 the lecture or the slide that actually we have a lot of assets um, like abandoned land and empty space underneath expressway or everywhere. So what if we turn that um, asset to, to be able to um, be the mediums or be the, the tools to, to, be, to, to make sure that people can live with the challenge or live with the pandemic or live with the climate change. I think that is our role because for example, we need to, to still be able to, to continue in doing many activities in the city. The park can can be the, the the tools if it can if we decide properly. It can be the tools in um, uh, providing the, the space for the water and for also, also for the people at the same time. It can mitigate the, this uh, natural disaster. So I think we would like to see more of the public realm that can encourage the people to use um, bicycle or having more social distance in the public space and. And I think people start to think about how we're gonna do more activity outdoor area rather than uh, crowded in, in the indoor environment. I think 
if we can look into the asset that we have closely, we, we will be able to, to find the, the answer. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Um, so we've got a question for, from Ifo Bahar Nugroho. Um, it was mentioned that public space can act as the tools to reclaim space for people and nature. Therefore, stakeholders' involvement, involvement and management are important to design public space. I can see that the communities and the general public are involved during the design. However, at, or when the spaces are already designed and built, how do you get feedback for continuous improvement to ensure that the public space can catch up with the developing human needs? Mm, it's, it's a good, interesting uh, question. For example, the one that we did and then the expressway, um, I think the process itself allowed uh, the community to be involved from the beginning. So um, once they, they've been, be, once they be part of the process from the beginning, they have a sense of belonging. As I mentioned that they, now they, they formed uh, the committee to take care, to take care of the, the park with the authority. So with the old model, the authority um, themselves will taking care of the park and people will use it, whether it's like it or not, right? And they can't adapt or utilize the, the park according to, to their need. But nowadays with that uh, model, um, when the people be able to, to form the community with the government and taking care of the park uh, by themselves, they can allow to organize many, many activities. And, 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 and actually some of the, the park, um, they start to design or redesign or have a certain uh, modification of the playground to fit to, to their needs. So I think in the, in the design has also um, need to provide certain room to, to make improvement. And in the process also allow this kind of the, the dialogue or, or committee that allow the people to, to be able to take in care the, the part with the authority. So I think it's very important to, to have that process and the design that allow the, the involvement. But uh, using participation method, it's not really easy since yeah. we have to make sure which how many percent does the the public um, involved in the design process. You as a, as an architect, you need to control everything and design yeah. the, the process from the beginning. Yeah, yeah. Um, of of course, I think when we um, start with this the dialogue. Uh, the community also expecting us as the profession to come out with some uh, recommendations because um, they recognize us as a profession. So, but of course, we also respect and recognize them that uh, people know best of what's going on on site and how we're going to accommodate that. So it's, it's about equal partner. I think we need to create that, that link or that trust from, from the beginning. So that means that when we have that trust, it's about listening to each other. So I think that dialogue will, will actually unfold the final solution of what will be the, the best um, answer. And during the process itself, we not always be the one who choose or select the, the best um, scheme for the, the community. We also having this kind of the, the tools in, in having various um, options that the actually community will be the one who decide of what the, the best uh, for them. And, but actually they um, listen to, it's, it's about listening to each other and learning with, it, um, with, it, with each other, I think. Okay, um, so we've got another questions for, from Stiawan Arribowo. Um, oh, sorry, maybe we can ask, we can share from Muhammad Akbar first. Um, how you see pandemic on a positive, positive note, where community res resilience and social fabric play important role in response to how people adapt to the situations? Do you see this as an interim uh, arrangement until vaccine is readily available to make people back to their routine? And also, how do you see the importance of public transport in the long term? What was the first question again? Um, how do you see the um, 
community uh, the community community resilience and social fabric play important role um, until the vaccine is readily available to make people back to their routine and okay. also how is the importance of public transport in the long term i think um, during the the pandemic um, in in, th- in thailand or even in bangkok um, we have seen this uh, phenomena where um, communities start to to think about how they can um, be self sufficient self sufficiency so we never um, see the 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 urban poor that actually living in 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 our city so we never seen that actually we are very fragile with the the the, the food or fragile with the uh, uh, the way we are using the the city so that pandemic is about um, make the problem being surfaced and make it make us erase uh, see the the problems that we are facing clearer and one of the solution that the community and and and, and working among themselves or among ourselves is about sharing and helping with each other so i think the the social cohesion, cohesion or is is about Uh, sharing the asset, for example, if um, the community has an abandoned land and it can turn into the urban farm, which can feed uh, the community. I think this is one of the the idea that surfaced during the pandemic that actually we need to be able to be to be able to self sufficient and help with each other, not only not only within the community, but sometimes they share that um, asset of the the food with the their neighborhood. So I think the social cohesion is really the, the really the important tools in in making sure that people can 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 be um, go can go through this pandemic. And I think um, if we're gonna make sure that it's going to be developed in the long term, it's about uh, the policy from the government and and also the the platform in how to make sure that um, the asset that we have in the city can be shared. And can be uh, exchanged and can be um, linked to create a better solutions. For example, the, the WePark platform is one of the the initiative that we try to prove that if we can share the land and turn it into the park or urban farm, it can reduce the uh, the risk of any disaster or pandemic in the future. I think this is uh, the thing that we need to think about. And the second question is about. Uh, Um, public transportation. I think uh, there's uh, also the um, after we open up the city, Bangkok start to uh, face the the traffic jam once again. I really enjoy during the lockdown when um, nobody um, go to the office and people can enjoy the fresh air and no car on the street and people can walk to the market or use their bicycle. But once we open up the city, it become business as usual again. And I think this is a loss opportunity if we're not doing something for for this um, mobility. And I think what we propose and and see in the the slide is about uh, turning the gray infrastructure in the city, which has a lot of potential to to do, to create this infrastructure that encourage people to walk and to do the bicycling. Uh, to be able to connect the community to the community or district to to the district, so I think that would be the better or alternative uh, transportation solution for the city. Because nowadays um, we don't have that solu- that alternative. It forces people to either buy a car or using the public transportation. That's it. But uh, the 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 pedestrian and and system or Bicycle system have never been invested by the government, so I think this pandemic need to um, is is a good sign to to show that possibilities to the government and also to the people. Yeah. Well, um, I actually agree with your ideas about dividing communities into small scales. So now each each person have their own role to. To act in their communities, like all of a sudden, some of people can do this or that, or do farming and everything else, and create their own communities again. Like, I do agree with this pandemic is 
would, would having a positive side in our social life, perhaps. Mm. Uh, yeah. And um, I would go to the next questions. So, um, we Indonesia's got public space since I don't know maybe you yeah, from prehistoric uh, era, but it's called Alun Alun, so it's like um, it's like a big yard in front of a castle or everything like monument or public building or important building and so on and so forth. But um, this time lately, public space were used for bad things like crime, crime um, drugs transactions, or even, mm. I don't know, there's a lot of things happening these days in public space, mm. um, mostly mm. when it's getting dark. And mm. the question is how you deal with your, how Thailand is actually deal with such kind of issues? How about the uh, protection system and the security? How, how, how also you can minimize that impact by your design? How, how you create or developing the mindset of the citizen to, mm -hmm. to use their public space in a good way or in a positive way? I, um... The project that um, one of the projects that I've been working with, um, with this alliance called um, Safe City for Children and um, Women, I think it, it, it's about these issues. Actually, the, the, when we do the survey in the city, we have found that even in the city center or even in the very close to the tourist attraction or the, the major area still have this um, unsafe um, zone. And I think um, the one of the, of course, the, the design always been the, the solutions in putting the um, cl clean up the, the obstacle, creating the better visibilities and providing the uh, camera or whatever and so on. But I think the the good um, uh, solution is 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 about um, creating the the neighborhood to to be uh, to to make sure that. If you have that kind of the place for the people that they can use it along the um, public space or abandoned space by turning that unsafe area into the place for the people, people will start to taking care and and see the benefit by themselves. But of course, each area has a certain ingredient and has a certain solution. Some of the public space can turn into the academic value or some of the abandoned or unsafe if we design well with the integrated well with the community it can turn into the family space or urban farm space but the, the problem is we never introduced the possibilities or the program to those asset or abandoned space in the city so once it become like a public land or become like a nobody's land it's become the crime and unsafe area. So I think the design has a very powerful tools in start getting people involved, creating physical design, but of course the social, um, social issue or social cohesion or sense of belonging around that space is very important to, to make sure that the, the space can not, not only be, and not only be safe in the long term, but also be, can, can be benefit for the people and for the overall city at the same time. So the first thing, how to make public space works that we need to create the communities first or yeah, by looking at the neighborhood. Yeah, I, I, think, I think the awareness is very important. Um, I think what we try to do with VPARC is, is about communicating um, with, with the public of how important and how uh, uh, people can can be part of this uh, creation and because in the past or uh, i think people might say still think that uh, the public realm is 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 a government job and because it's not in our backyard or it's not in our boundary once it's government job and if the government doesn't do the job it, it becomes the problems so now we try to 
create the, the understanding or the new mindset that actually is everyone's job that can can turn that to to benefit everyone. So um, it, it's about changing mindset through the communication, to the process, and by showing the good um, example. But once we have that already, it's about turning that into the very smart or incentive policy to make sure that that kind of the process and, and, and collaboration can happen again and again to, to create and, and, and solve that, that problems. So I think, it, it, yeah, there are many layers to, to be done, but, but I think we should start with the communicating and, and awareness and, and getting people all, all side to be involved. Um, well, it's kind of frustrating becoming landscape architect because you have to solve a lot of things before you're designing something. <laughs> I don't know, maybe architect as well with participations method. But I, yeah, but yeah, uh, how can you survive with that? Like, it will take like maybe six months minimum I or years. I, I think it depends if um, some of the project is. If we're lucky, if the government uh, understand and we got a stakeholder well informed and involved, I think it, it can be completed. For example, the one underneath the expressway, it, it finished in around um, within five or six months uh, from, from the start. But if we go into the area that has a more complex and more di um, dispute, it, it will take even longer because you need a lot of permission. But uh, but again, I think there are a good progress um, that people in society and even the developer or private sector start to see the value of the, the public, public space, that they try to integrate it in, in their development and they try to provide the budget to, to, to help in creating the, the better city. Also, the, the mindset of government start to, to change. So you can see that in the past, um, for the past three to five years, we see a lot of uh, new public uh, space start to coming up in, in the city and also not only in Bangkok, in, in other cities as well. There are a lot of movement from the, the people. So I think the, the people has a important role to, to push and, and show the possibilities with the designer, with the landscape architect and with the environmental designers. Sure. We, um, like, for example, in here, we also have a lot of movement with public parks mm. and stuff, but most of them, it just doesn't work that well because of the crime and things and stuff. Maybe the government is not really helpful on help the architect to build the communities, the participation process yeah. and everything else, which I is kind of important. It's in, I, um, I, I still facing that the same problems like you you mentioned. Mm, I think uh, if we can find certain champion in the, in each sector, it will be the, the key to to form the, the good alliance to to start with. I think even in the the, the corrupted system, we still be able to find a good person to to work with. And I think. It's about creating trust. I think nowadays when we're developing the, the city, we start to losing trust. People do not, don't really trust with the government. People don't really trust with the, the private sector or developer. So everyone has certain perception and ideas and doesn't really work together. I think by, like you said, it's, it's not an easy process, but it's, it's a long-term process and more sustainable process. If we can, using the, the design or the public space or whatever we build as a tool in getting the people together. I think this is a, the, the, the ultimate goal because there are so much uh, potential and so much challenge and problems that we are facing, not about the public space, but there are many, many. If we can create trust and creating the dialogue and working together with, with, with all the stakeholders. It will be the, the, the good um, solution for, for all the challenges we're gonna face in the future. So it's just takes time and uh, positively yeah. it's not impossible. It's totally possible, but you just 
needs to take time. Yeah, it takes time. So we've got another questions from Sumitaw Chitra. Can you share in more detail the idea of crowdfunding to implement urban projects? Okay. Is it your social contribution to the city or can it be monetized? Can, can it be what? Sorry. Monetized. Monetized? Um, I don't get... Uh, like, can I explain? Like what? Like can it... Sorry. Um, Okay, can you please uh, monetize this like uh, being being used for other other purpose? Like, let me find the, the right um, the right words first. But you can answer the first question. Sure. Um, the the one that um, we doing is uh, the park, um, the the pocket park. Um, basically, um, we. Um, at first, we had an idea that actually people can can do all the crowdfunding to create a park, right? Um, you can donate the money to for the tree, for the bench, and for everything in the park. But um, there are certain opinion in the society that um, why we need to donate the, the money to create the park since we already pay the tax for the government. It should be the government job, right, to 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 create it, to create the, the the public facilities. But of course, there are certain opinion that actually we can uh, jump in um, because uh, city has so many uh, problems and and potential. If we can, uh, if we can share our asset and and help giving a hand, it will be uh, more succeed. So we we work with this um, idea that. We should um, actually government should pay a certain amount in uh, in creating a park, but of course there are certain rooms uh, that uh, people can can also co funding. I think it would be the, the nice solution where um, everyone can and can share the asset. Government of course needs to 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 play a, a bigger role in in um, giving the asset and author authorization and of course the budget starting budget. But of course, there are certain room to 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 allow other donor to 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 participate, because if we can um, communicate this clearly to the society that it's not about creating the park, but it's about creating the the community that uh, and possibility that everyone can can be part of the city creation, and then we do that on the online platform. It will be started at the end of this year, so we categorize it different. Um, Elements, uh, different um, um, elements in the park that people can 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 donate. Some people might donate uh, a tree or a bench or uh, uh, play equipment. But uh, the main infrastructure and the main facilities of the park will be budgeted by um, the government. So it's a core funding. Yeah. But of course. Um, I think this is not uh, the we don't have the policy or, or incentive policy yet, but we would like to see and also uh, actually working with the government that actually we the government should provide the incentive policy. Uh, people can use this um, payment or uh, donation to to reduce their their tax or, or claiming for that. So I think we 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 still working on that model. So to the to the second questions, is it pure social contribution or to the city, or can it be monetized? Which means that it can be used for create money. The park, right? Yeah. You mean the the by turning the park to create the money, right? To to generate. Yeah, in, in a lot of way. Um, yeah. For example, from Ifo Bahar, he, he told us that we can use it as commercial areas or we can develop stages and everything else. understand that. Mm -hmm. At the moment, uh, the regulation doesn't allow um, to, to open up the cafe or uh, do that kind of things in the, the public park. But what we try to do is that um, we would like to introduce this idea um, to the, the private land that they want to turn that into the, 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 the park. Because at the moment, there is a certain um, um, interest from the, the, own, the private owner that they would like to rent it out, rent, 
rented the land to the government for five or ten years, and then we can manage that uh, land by has a, a certain uh, understanding or a memorandum of understanding between the, the donor and, and the government that um, we can um, utilize that land for commercial use. But of course, the the income will be only serve for the to to cover the expense or to to cop to manage the the park. I think this is what we try to do with the, the private land first, and of course the government need to amend the 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 the, the, the regulation to allow that to, to happen. We have seen in in other city or in other country that uh, um, you can um, turn the park into uh, many many um, activities and and can create a lot of income, but. At the moment in, in Bangkok, we don't we don't have that at the moment, but but we're gonna test it out for the, the private um, donor who, to show their possibilities to 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 the government. Um another questions from Norwin Hajadi. Does Thai government do focus group discussion FGD on redevelopment of the urban space in Thailand? By doing so, the grassroots aspiration could be gathered more comprehensive. Some local government did or do this previously till governor level. If yes, how often? How so, often? So, mm. Sorry, how often in do, doing what? Sorry. How, um, does, does Thailand government do the FGD on re redevelopment of urban space in Thailand? And how... Doing uh -huh. How to how the government did right? How, government how often? Did. If yes, yeah. How often? Mm, I'm I'm not. I don't have the information for for other city, but uh, in in Bangkok, we we start to do this kind of uh, urban regeneration. I'm not sure if it answer the question. Um, um, we have this project. Um, um, five years ago, in regenerating the in, in internal city area, and that's why the the, the regeneration uh, projects start to um, come up uh, uh, and be completed in this um, this year or the next couple of year. So, but of course, um, we don't have that much of the public realm project happened in. In, in Bangkok is quite kind of a uh, limited or the government not really invest in in this that much I'm not I think that that's the reason why we would like to to have that um, uh, investment co-investment from from the private sector which require the incentive policy to 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 happen yeah did I answer hopefully. Uh, maybe Norwin could add some point. Um, okay. Um, how about if that about the government? How about your project itself? About how what? You, oh. About about your about your own project. Mm -hmm. How do you do this um, FGD kind of things to? FGD. What's the FGD? Uh, uh, FGD, the focus group discussions. Oh, on, okay. To, to achieve the final result or final decisions. The focus group discussion, right? Yeah, yeah um, any kind of discussion mm -hmm. with other sector and stuff. Yeah, um, I think the, the project that we did, I think this is the, um, we did it quite often. I mean, um, from the start, because um, when we do this um, project, that relating to to the public realm, we need to find out first what is the circumstance and what is going on, or finding the stakeholders in in the area, and start to to start with the, the focus group dialogue and 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 see whether will they have any resistance or will they have any um, comments or is there any dispute in the city or in that particular area, and then we start to to unfold the, the process and to to customize the process that fit into the, to that particular um, process because to, to that particular area because different area has a certain 
circumstance. And then after we go through that, we always uh, come back and, and recheck um, the result. And, but it's not easy because, uh, because some of your question mentioned also about the, after the design handover to, to, the, to, the, to the area. I mean, the, the process itself need to be able to identify the key stakeholders to, to be able to, to, to ad adopt this project or, or be taking care of this um, project in the long term. Sometimes we can fight it, sometimes we, we can't fight it and government still need to, to play the, the bigger role in, in that. So I think the process had, I mean, the dialogue or focus group discussion is about empowering people and stakeholders and find out who will be the, the key person who, that we can rely on and, 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 and push uh, and giving this project for, for, for them. Okay. Um, another question from Andy Wichaksono. Um, with city becomes flexible, will city never be able anymore to shape their uniqueness, its own culture, character in the future? and start losing its identity or flexible cities just a concept to, re to respond to the current economic issues. You mean the flexible city? Yep. If it, if it going to affect in the identity of the city, you mean? Um, like um, each city has their own uniqueness and identities and history, so on and so forth. Um, with it's become flexible, does it reduce the quality of its own identity or or let's say that's just normal that's just okay i think uh, identity need to be evolved I, I believe so because um i mean for example right now we have many um, the new generations and um, middle old generations and some of the new generation might not really uh, appreciate um, the identity or the, the old um, way or the heritage that we have. So it, 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 it doesn't about the good thing or a bad thing, but it's a, I think city is about evolving and the flexibility, it, I think it, it, it's in a good um, approach where it allows people to, to adapt uh, the space and allow the, the space to be able to respond with the emerging need and 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 behavior because this city I think importantly the city need to belong to the to the people of the uh, current time right I think if we can provide uh, the system and the space that allow that to surface and create a dialogue and and form the the identity by themselves I think it's is it's a good thing. But of course, uh, the dialogue need to include everyone. You can't develop your own city identity by excluding certain group of the people. So I think the flexibility is a good thing to, to happen in the city. I know by, flexi by being flexible, it can accommodate a lot of its citizen as well. Like, yeah. it will be fun. Yeah. So another question from Hendrik Polta. How do you see space making these days? And what is your suggestion to improve, to improve it? Especially maybe after the pandemic. You mean the space making in, in the public realm, right? Yes. Mm. Um, I, for the past two or three years, uh, people start to get um, comfortable in interacting with the city space. Uh, I'm not sure what's the reason, for example, when we organize the design week and, and turning the, the street into the space for concert or exhibition, and, and people start to, to, to interact and comfortable with that, which I think is, is a good thing because um, because the, 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 the consequence of that uh, place making has a certain good impact to the community and to the city because it generates a lot of traffic for uh, the business and, and, and show the possibility of many uh, the 
good thing to happen for public space and recreation space. But uh, the downside of that is that um, how we're gonna turn that event or interim scheme into the reality or permanent uh, scheme. Because of course, uh, place making might be the good uh, stimulation or good starting point in, in start the conversation and, and, and getting people to interact with the city. But of course, we need to, to turn that interim into the reality and, and maintain and sustain in the long term. We, we have not be succeed in, in that stage yet, but we quite um, um, success in, in creating the, the dialogue with, with, the, with, the, with the people in the city. But of course, um, it, 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 we, we need to work more on that to, to turn that uh, place-making process and, and turn it into the actual, actual one. The funny thing in here uh, when COVID happening is most of people all of a sudden really active and doing sports. Oh, and yeah. They're um, consciously activating places so I don't know, maybe because of the COVID-19 and they just have to stay at home, all of the places all of a sudden just happen. Yeah. But the places like um, shopping malls and stuff, maybe they're just shut, shutting down. Mm. So maybe there's a, a, a shifting trends when people no longer using indoors, but they're starting yeah. outdoors. Yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm not sure what, I think it's a, like you mentioned, it's, it's part of the, the pandemic when people be locked down in the house and, and then they would like to, to see the new possibilities out of this uh, pandemic and see more potential with the city. We just recently got a, a call from the university to create an outdoor cinema in uh, the space underneath the expressway. So this is kind of the, the phenomena as well of something that probably we can learn from other city and then we would like to, to try on in, in our own way. And then we, we are working with, with that um, idea with, with the students. I think that the inter, interim scheme of placemaking is a good uh, start, like I mentioned. And, and then, but, but the thing is, I think that the government themselves need to creative enough to to allow this to to happen because uh, with that current regulation and, and rules um, the road cannot be closed or to spend on the expressway cannot be used those kind of thing might um, um, diminish or dilute the aspiration of people that they would like to to see out of this uh, pandemic or even people start being creative all of a sudden and using abandoned space that you've told before. Yeah, but the challenge is that, yeah. Yeah, uh, no, um, I mean like the government needs to make sure that this COVID-19 won't be ex exaggerated or even spreading even more because of all of these kind of activities. Yeah, they, they have the certain rules and of course. But, but right now the government has uh, the, the big amount of budget to generate the uh, economic. I'm not sure whether it's the same thing in, in your country. Yes. Yeah, yeah, the same, right? But uh, so far, most of the, the, the budget has been um, focusing in, in generate uh, the income, which, which is important. But of course, we, were like, we haven't seen the, the budget that spend to, yeah. to improve the environment and uh, the green infrastructure or public uh, space that much. So I think that the mindset of the, the government or I'm not sure whether in my city or in other city too, they never seen the, the public realm as the strategic uh, tools or, or elements that it can create an impact to many um, area, right? Environmental, social, economic or health if, you can, if they see that as a strategic uh, element, they will spend on public realm with certain purpose, not, 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 not like this. Right now they spend in 
cutting more road or creating the concrete embankment, which actually in opposite is destroying and it's going to come back again to to create another pandemic or another catastrophe. So it's not a good or smart way in in regenerating the the new city or the new era of the the development of, after the pandemic. Sure. Um, and also we've got questions. How to uh, from Hotma Toruan? How to build? How how we build ide ideal public space? Ideal. Ideal. How to build it? Yeah. I'm also wondering around how to build the ideal one. Maybe it needs to be contextual. I don't know. I mm, I think it's what we try to do as a VPark platform because I think before that we seen the not the ideal one where the public space designed by the government with a top-down process and doesn't really inspiring in terms of the design and doesn't have a sense of belonging. It's not the ideal one. And then the, the reason why we create this uh, VPAP platform because we would like to create the ideal one, not only in terms of the design, but in terms of the process where everyone is involved. So that's why we call it a VPAP, um, not involved only from uh, or giving the opinion, but also giving hand or uh, giving certain assets whether it's money or, or, or ideas or helping in, in constructing. So I think this is the ideal process. I think the, the ideal um, space or physical design, I, I don't think is the issue because people have so many creativity idea and has a possibility in turning into the reality. But I think that the process in, 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 in creating the park and using the park as a tools in getting people as the same society to gain back the sense of belonging to the city. I think this is the ideal one that we would like to, to see. And of course, we have seen some of that success story in other projects that been doing before in my country or in other city. And we would like to, to make it happen here or make it even uh, fit in and even better and, and make it in in the long term, yeah, this is the ideal one. So there will be any any rule of thumb for that? Um, no, I I think the the involvement. I, I still believe that uh, the dialogue and involvement is uh, the the key. But uh, the, the 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 details of of that uh, how we gonna construct how you're going to form the, the process I think is is kind of the customize to 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 the to the certain ecology certain requirement but we need to be keeping informed and keeping everyone involved because of course like I, I show you in the slide I used to be the I used to be an activist and I, I used to confront with the, the government and I have seen that uh, confrontation it never worked mm. And, and of course, the design doesn't be the, the only solution. You need the policy process and every instrument to come together. That is a, the, the key, I guess. And we don't have the ready-made or uh, powerful tool or powerful instrument yet. So that's why I think um, giving, if everyone can share and having the dialogue and in, in involvement, I think it will close the loophole and, and make it really happen. Okay, maybe one more question. Um, for the crowded cities such as Indonesia, um, there are no many abandoned lands. So is, mm. are there any other solution to make a public space? But uh, this one question from Nadia Bella, but I'm not really sure if we have no abandoned lands. But yeah, maybe for for this case, can we just hmm. think about? I, yeah. I, I, I'm not sure whether it might be the same situation in, in Bangkok. We have the, the CBD as well. Um, there's one solution is that uh, we try to um, 
integrated uh, the public realm in the new development. I think in other city and also in uh, in my city, the government tried to come up with the incentive policy that if you allow the the, the area to be opened for the the public, you will be able to be able to build more that kind of things. I think it happened in Singapore and in other city already. Those kind of incentive. But right now we do the the, the data to analyze the the abandoned land in the city center. But surprisingly, we we found that there are still certain amount of the the the, the abandoned land because uh, the owner doesn't have the right time to develop it yet. And, and now because of the government tax, they need to be able, they need to release that, that land. So, so that's why we still have seen that possibilities. Or even during this pandemic, the economy is not in a good shape. So the, the, the developer may be able to release a certain land bank that cannot be developed at this time. So while waiting for the next three to five years, why, why don't turn that to, to benefit um, to the people and to the city. So we, we are having that request at the moment. So I think there are certain possibilities even in the city area. And of course, we also asking the possibility from the roof, um, aban not abandoned roof, um, but of course the rooftop of many, many buildings in the city never been used. We just recently talked to um, the owner of the, the hotel chain so I think that that has a potential if we can link the asset of of what we found with the person who has a know-how and, and ability to design and and and, and to, to maintain and the authorization of the government. I think it can even happen. Yeah. So um, maybe one last question from Harry Nor Norata Herpiana. What do you think about utilizing a space under highway elevated road? Mm. Um, What's the like, question? Uh, what What do you think about utilizing the space under the highway road? Like in Indonesia, it's really common, but in informal way. Mm. So as you mm. mentioned in your presentation, what do you think about that? Like, what is the potential? Maybe you have turned it into a sport sports field yeah we we have um, done the study and and then we found that some of the project um, can be su succeed but some of the project has mm. Mm, ha mm, can, cannot be uh, succeed be because it, de it depends on on the area um, and I think what we try to propose to the government is that uh, you can develop as a small pieces of, of that um, um, area underneath the expressway, it would be much better if it can be linked, link it up to, that can be integrated to, to the surrounding neighborhood and, and facilities, because it needs to work together between the, the landscape, the urban and the, the district and the architecture. So to create a total environment, as I said, it's, it's, it's a part of the infrastructure. If you can't create that kind of the link or system, it wouldn't be succeed. It will be just another park that it can be much more create can, can create much more potential out of that. And I think we 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 try to to link them up and and then we start to to talk with the uh, the, the, the the stakeholders to to make it happen. But but it can turn into many ways for commercial for park for recreation and, and right right now I mentioned they, they would like to turn into the cultural space for cinema and and culture cultural activities. So so the problems another problem is that um, we, we we need someone or some organization to curate the program. Most of the the time this you spend so much money to invest and turn it into the nice um, space but uh, how you're gonna utilize it is really important. Because if you don't utilize it well, it will come back into the abandoned space once again, right? And as I mentioned, that community has a certain role to play in creating the program and maintaining it. But they have the limited resources and, and power. 
But if you can link that space as somebody al already asked about the possibility for the commercial use or turn it into the concert hall or whatever, I think it will open up more possibilities that not only the neighborhood can be benefited, but city can be benefited from. I think we, we need to see that uh, growth to develop the, the hardware and software at the same time. Definitely agree. Since we've got project in here, like park beneath the highway road, but it doesn't work that well because it has no integration with the surroundings or even the communities. Somehow the right. architects just work with their own worlds without really right. understanding what the community needs. Mm. Okay. Um, maybe what we can thank you, Yosapon, for the inspiring discussions this afternoon. Thank um, you. Maybe what we've, we've can see that whether we are architect or landscape architect, uh, once we are involved with public, we need to, to have involvement with other sector as well and collaborate with uh, communities and maybe the government as the, as the main stakeholder. And therefore maybe there's no shortcuts if you want to have a nice, uh, public project or, or, or urban scape. And also, um, maybe the importance of uh, public participation in public project, how to gain trust and how to develop or open dialogue between the architect and other stakeholder and sectors and how, how we start to listen, whether as an architect, how we start to the material, to the clients and Maybe how the how important is the community itself in the public project, and also being creative. It's much much more important to think about the possibilities of the abandoned land and reuse the empty space and so on and so forth. Maybe um, that's it from me. Um, I would like to thank you again for your support and everyone and hope um, everyone will have a wonderful evening. Um, I'll give it back to Nindya. Uh, thank you. Uh, and I also want to thank Mr. Yosapon Bunsom for sharing his knowledge with all of us. Thank you, Mr. Yosapon. We thank wish you. you good health and success for all your work. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me. Yeah. And and hope to to have um, further more discussion in the next opportunities and hopefully we might be able to um, collaborate or develop or do something together. I think we I think we share the same um, challenge and also the same aspiration and same vision to create a better society. So hopefully we we can um, work toward that um, together in in the near future. So thank you for having me for this um, wonderful afternoon and, and hope to see you again. Thank you. Okay. Terima kasih untuk rekan-rekan semua dan kami ingin berterima kasih juga kepada rekan mitra Ultracam Construction Chemicals yang di awal acara telah membuka dengan pemutaran video produknya dan telah mensupport Yai Banten selama acara Trilogi Forum Design Urban. Kami persilahkan kepada Bapak Adi Lukman Syarif dari Autocam Construction Chemicals untuk memberikan satu dua patah kata. Ya, uh, selamat sore semuanya. Terima kasih kepada Mbak Nindia. Suara saya jelas, Mbak? Jelas, jelas, Pak. Iya. Terima kasih semuanya kepada IAI Bantan. Saya Adi Lukman Syarif, pewakili uh, Ultracam Chemical Construction. Di sini mendukung penuh acara ini berlangsung alhamdulillah mbak acaranya bisa dibilang sukses sangat lancar di sini, di sini acaranya sangat positif uh, apa membagi uh, banyak ilmu-ilmu baru uh, berdiskusi diskusi yang positif uh, di sini saya ber, uh, mengucapkan sukses selalu banyak-banyak terima kasih kepada semuanya terutama Yai Banten semoga Uh, silaturahmi kita bukan hanya sampai di sini aja Mbak ya, mungkin ada ada cara selanjutnya yang uh, masih bisa kita support, uh, kami bisa support. 
Ya mungkin sekian aja dari saya. Saya selaku mewakili dari uh, Ultracam. Terima kasih banyak. Selamat sore semuanya. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Terima kasih. Terima kasih. Terima kasih atas semua partisipasi rekan-rekannya yang sudah semangat ngikutin dari awal hingga sore. Selanjutnya untuk di sertifikat akan kami kirimkan melalui email dan hanya akan diberikan bagi rekan-rekan yang sudah mengisi link presensi pada chat Zoom dan chat YouTube yang sudah dikirimkan panitia. Jadi pastikan sekali lagi rekan-rekan sudah mengisi ya. Rekan-rekan mohon diaktifin lagi kameranya semua supaya wajah kita terlihat karena dari panitia akan melakukan sesi foto bersama. Terima kasih. Rekan-rekan semua, seperti yang sudah disampaikan oleh Bang Bilian di awal acara tadi, IAI Banten akan mengadakan beberapa agenda pada bulan Juni hingga Juli. Kepada Mbak Vera, mohon bantuannya untuk menampilkan slide agenda. Uh, Adapun ya acara saya sambil bacakan ya. Adapun acara-acara yang IAI Banten akan selenggarakan adalah pendaftaran anggota baru tanggal 8 Juni sampai 2 Juli 2020, kemudian penataran kode etik arsitek dan kaidah tata laku profesi arsitek pada hari Jumat tanggal 3 Juli 2020. Penataran keprofesian strata 1 dan 2 akan diselenggarakan hari Sabtu tanggal 4 Juli. Dan keprofesian strata 3 dan 4 akan diselenggarakan hari Minggu, tanggal 5 Juli. Bagi rekan-rekan yang ingin mendaftar, dapat masuk ke link yang tertera atau bisa menghubungi pengurus IAI Banten melalui nomor WhatsApp untuk untuk informasi lebih lanjut. Nomor WhatsApp-nya terlihat jelas ya di layar. Nah, sampailah kita pada penghujung acara forum desain yang ke-6 sore ini. Atas nama pengurus IAI Banten dan seluruh panitia yang bertugas, Vera sebagai host, Leonardo sebagai penanggung jawab acara, Rona Asakra sebagai co-host dua, dan saya Nindya selaku MC, kami pamit undur diri. Terima kasih semuanya dan sampai berjumpa dalam acara IAI Banten selanjutnya. Salam sehat selalu, terima kasih. Ya.